So we're gonna be going to one of our many um, denim vendors that we use. This one is gonna be going to Mexico. We're gonna go through the entire process to show you exactly how much work is involved in making a pair of jeans from the very beginning through to when they sew the jeans, they cut the fabric, um, they put the rivets in, the zips, etc., etc. But then the washing afterwards, there's, there's a ton of uh, steps and processes and we're gonna show you exactly uh, what, what goes into making a pair of jeans. Better yet, let me just show you. English passport. Hey guys, Aaron here, design director from 5.4. Just landed, we've literally been traveling all day. Just made our transfer from Mexico City to Torreon, where our, uh, one of our denim factories is. So we're now heading to the hotel, start the big, the big trip tomorrow to educate you on denim. So here we are guys in Mexico uh, with one of our favorite denim vendors and we're going to show you exactly how denim is made from beginning to end. So yeah, let's go. This is where they cut the fabric. So. Your pair of jeans is made up of many different pieces. So to start, the fabric is laid out in a big rolls on layers of layers and layers and layers of fabric. And then it has to rest. So fabric needs to relax and it will absorb moisture from the air, et cetera, et cetera. So it's slowly relax, which means it'll get to its, it'll get to its natural. They do, they place up to, on top is the, um, Each piece is bundled to make sure that it's going to go to the right pair of jeans. We have uh, three different fits of jeans. We have relaxed, straight, and we have slim. So slim is more for, for me, it's probably the most modern fit that we do at the moment. It skims the silhouette. It's not skin tight. It's just slimmer. It's just neater. The straight's for the guy that doesn't feel as comfortable wearing a slim jean. And then a relaxed is obviously for the guy that wants to be more relaxed. So basically the inside seams are um, flat felled, which is basically a really strong seam where the edges are folded inside each other and then top stitch on top. So here they add in a back pocket and they actually have super specialist machinery um, that they can actually control using their um, cell phone. Pretty cool. So to make sure that the jeans are extra strong, they put rivets in, which is what they're doing behind me. And the rivets reinforce points of stress. So something like so far here, where you're always putting your hands in your pockets, there's a lot of stress. So you put the rivets in and it makes it stronger. So on our jeans, on the, you'll notice on the right hand uh, corner of the pocket, we have a signature uh, white rivet. And that's unique to our jeans. And our actual rivets are called blown rivets. And what it is, is a disc. And it's very, it's a very, it's like one of the first rivets ever made. It's which is why we use it, because it's very traditional. And you have another thing and it punches through the fabric like this. And it's punched down on top. So it comes through and then flattened. And what happens is it drags through a little bit of um, fabric. And this is normally only found on like Japanese premium denim but we do it on our denim for you guys. So here they're um, starting to make the pieces that make up the fly, so the opening um, of the pants. Um, and this machine here is an automatic um, zip machine, super cool. Our jeans, we do two different um, fly openings and they both have uh, different benefits. Bottom fly is 
great because you don't catch your bits and pieces in the zip. Uh, we do a zip fly, it's called auto lock zip. So it won't expose you accidentally because it locks itself. If the zip is facing down, it will stay, it will stay shut. So here they're making the belt loops, which, which automatically folds the fabric and stitches it down. And then they're attached to the, um, the garment. This is where they do what they call the dry process. So the dry process is, is aging the jeans. So first you, you create the wear on the jeans. So right now they're creating what's the whiskers. The whiskers are the bits where you get, you see if I'm raising my leg, then you see this marks that come here. This is where you're, over time that creates a fade and that's called a whisker. So they're basically hand doing the whiskers. They have like a, a pattern, a texture underneath so that when they rub the sand, it feels like it naturally wears according to how you would actually wear it as a, as a garment. So you get a very natural look. This is how the jeans, they start out and the raw is stay. And then we're in a laser room and these fades and wears to make, this is the start of the process to make it look like um, the guy, guys who have worn the jeans for a long time. So like your favorite pair of jeans. They do this part, this one is done by laser. Traditionally, it's done by just sanding. They're actually developing uh, how the marks are gonna look. So when they're taking it of an actual naturally faded pair of jeans, and they're trying to imitate that so that it looks it looks um, natural. They, this is what they're doing it on computer, and they just they're, they're playing around until they get the most uh, they get the marks that they desire, and then they're gonna put that into the computer, and then the laser will do it time after time after time and it'll be consistent with every pair of jeans that I do. So this is another way to achieve the fade and the dry, it's called dry process. They call it dry process in the laundry. It's another way to achieve the fade, uh, the faded look on your jeans. So what they do, they have inflatable legs. They'll blow up the legs on the jeans and then they rub by hand with sandpaper. They'll put the jeans over the top, inflate the jeans. Then they'll do the hand sanding, which gives it a more natural look. PP sprays potassium for manganate, and what it does, it basically bleaches out areas of the jeans, so it creates an even more vintage feeling on the jeans. And you'll see the guys doing it, they're all in their hazmat suits, the masks on. It sucks the water when they're spraying, and so basically it neutralizes all the dyes, so that when the water is released back into the environment, it neutralizes all the dyes, so it, get, it just puts water back in and not dangerous chemicals or bad chemicals. You can wash 200 pairs of jeans at one time. So it's bigger than your average home washing machine. Uh, this one is a new machine and it uses less water, so it's more eco-friendly. So this is a centrifuge. They spin the denim and it takes out all the water or as much as possible and it reduces the uh, need to dry it for so long and gets rid of some of the stains. So this is where they tie the denim. You see these marks? These ones? They tie the denim like this, and then they wash it. And when they untie it, you have all these marks. And it's like, uh, replicates old vintage denim. When they used to wash it by hand. I like that wash, man, that's cool. You see the true genius at work. Like this guy is like a legend. I started this in El Paso back in the early 80s. My uncle actually got me into this. He used to work for Farrah Jeans, one of the biggest, biggest manufacturer in El Paso back in those days. He got me into one of the laundries with some of his friends. So I know from end to end and this business in the denim. Yes, I started off as a presser. Then I jumped myself into the laundry. I seen the big machines, everybody putting pumice stones. I said, what? What's going on with this? And ever since then, I like destroying jeans. Now, now we destroy them. <laughs> back then it was just stone one. Now we destroy the garments. True religion, Jeff Rudis. Yeah. Uh, Peter Corral and Jerome with Seven and other brands that actually I started them up. 
at Kite Garment Process in Los Angeles. Whatever solution you want to put, then as, it, as it's being tumbled onto the, the garment, the rock is oxidizing the, gar the garment indigo. In this case, I'm oxidizing uh, yeah, the yeah, dye yeah. that I'm applying to the garment. That's what's oxidized already. So here we got the guys taking the jeans out of the dryers after they've been dried. After all the wet and dry processes, this is basically the last bit. And then after this, they'll go and um, be pressed and then they'll um, go through the quality control. I hope this video has given you a newfound love of denim, if you didn't already love it. And um, yeah, I'm glad that I could share a bit of my passion for denim with you guys and you can see the work that goes into making a pair of 5-4 jeans.